Imagine, I have a piece of ice floating gently down the river in early spring. No problem. It's very easy going. But now, uh-oh, is that a rock? I'm about to hit something big and get stopped. Oh, now I'm jammed into this rock and I am in the beginning stages of an ice jam. And that spells big trouble for the communities upstream. Over the course of winter, lakes, rivers, and streams of all sizes begin to freeze. As Canadians, this weather phenomenon allows us to enjoy one of our favorite pastimes. But as warmer temperatures roll in and we hang up our gear, the ice that we've been skating on all winter begins to thaw and break. If we get a cold winter, thick river ice, and then a sudden thaw and breakup on those rivers, that ice can get stuck and compress into what is known as an ice jam. The process by which stationary accumulation of fragmented ice restricts flow on a river or stream. That is what's happening here. You can actually see a huge amount of water, huge amount of ice all pushed up against the bridge here. But beyond that, uh, it's just, it's all ice back there. It's up against one of the dams there. And so there is a huge, like just titanic forces pushing against these uh, different spans. The recipe for an ice jam is this. One, a river with tight bends or obstructions. Two, a cold, cold winter, kind of like what we're used to in Canada. And three, a fast warm up in the spring. The more dangerous situation occurs when it's accompanied by significant amounts of rain. That can lead to the rivers rising quite quickly, breaking apart the ice sheets without that melt. Instead, what happens is those ice sheets retain their structural integrity and begin to come down the river. They can get jammed up without being broken up. And that is a big danger. See right behind me on the St. Clair River, that's exactly what's happening. As the massive ice sheets are carried downriver, they could come across an obstacle, something like a narrowing of the channel, a shallow spot, human construction, or even just a bend. Where and when the ice flows come to rest depends greatly on the flow and depth of the river. Wide rivers with a slow current like the St. Lawrence may not jam up as the water may be too deep, while fast, shallow rivers like the Grand River dam up quickly and flood. Conservation authorities are actually unique to Ontario. Uh, you don't see them in any other province in Canada. One of our core roles is to do flood forecasting and monitoring. So what we do here is we utilize stream gauges on the rivers to monitor water levels, air temperature, water temperature, anything we can get our hands on just to see what's happening and to predict how that water or ice is going to move. Check out this ice jam from 2019. This ice jam clogged up the Thames River and likely caused hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in water damage. Fortunately, nobody was hurt or killed. Over time, the ice jam will melt enough to let go, but that doesn't mean it's safe again. The newly melted water can pulse downstream and can lead to further flooding or potentially even another jam. Eventually, when all the ice lets go, this is known as a wash. Exactly how these ice jams break up is still somewhat of a mystery. It may be simply that the hydrodynamic forces eventually are too much for even the strong structural integrity of these ice sheets. Or, as is once in a while the case, we use an icebreaker to get through that ice jam. 